Connie. Yes. We're here in Oakland, California. Right. You live in a tent encampment. 77th Avenue Rangers. You're homeless. Yes. Tell me about it. Oh, wow. Being homeless or how I became homeless? Wherever you want to start. Ah, uh, let's see. November 2015, um, Shelter Inc. Nonprofit agency out of Concord asked me to vacate the unit that I was in. Um, the owner wanted possession of the property. They didn't have a three bedroom to accommodate me and my kids. And uh, we ended up in a motel, $100 a day. I could not handle. Um, we downgraded to a sleazy motel. I wasn't comfortable with that because of my children. And we downgraded to my van. Very uncomfortable. Two teenagers, well three, in a van with me. It wasn't working. I have a 16 year old, well at that, he was 12 then. I decided to have him go stay with one of my brothers and then the other two went on their way. One of them ended up in Ohio at Central State, Central State University. The other one lives in Concord. She's uh, doing quite well. Um, she's employed with Tesla and things are good. Me, I bounced from couch to couch for a while and then I met this guy, and here I am. Here I am, from Concord, doing well, to 77th Ave. It's as good as it can get. Um, but it's still homeless. I, it's still homeless. I have applied for any and everything that pops up online for subsidized housing. I've even got a place, it wasn't subsidized, and a few days before I was supposed to move in, something happened at the complex, the feds went in, seized records, and oh, nothing came of that. Um, I got really depressed after that um, and been so since. Um, I never, I stopped looking. I stopped looking for a place. Learned helplessness sets in. What people don't realize, they say homeless people want to be homeless. No, they tried to get out of homelessness. They worked hard, but it's not easy. And then social services doesn't make it easy. Mm -hmm. And after a while, you give up. I had, um, I can't get anywhere like this, um, so I think there's a saying about pull your bootstraps up and keep it moving, um, so I'm back searching again, um, in Alameda County, it's virtually impossible to find an affordable place without subsidized assistance uh, in my search a minimum uh, studio is twelve hundred dollars um, I get nine something and then the places want three times your income of the rent your income to be three times the right. amount of the rent okay bad that's strike one your credit has to be right two, strike two, strike three, I have a felony. So, I mean, I'm like, where to next? And to put even more on my shoulders, I'm in a relationship that's, I'm a victim of domestic violence. Um, well, you're safe here. I am safe here. Right. 
I am safe here. And I'm determined to get a place. It may not be in Alameda County. Well, that's what people are going to say. Well, why don't you move? It's so expensive. Everybody says that. <laughs> I, there's a 65-year-old man, chronically homeless, can hardly walk, and people are saying, well, he should move. He should move. Well, where do you move to? And then you're just homeless in another city. Because they want three months rent, and they, you know, and you, uh, uh. Yeah. Uh, my kid... One of my kids, he's like, Mom, come on and come on to Ohio. We'll get you a place, you know, and I refuse to have to put my burden on one of my children. They worked hard to get where they are, and it's not, in my eyes, it's not fair that they would have to take care of me or assist me because of the mistakes I've made and well that's interesting because people are gonna say why aren't your kids taking it? but it's you it's me yeah it's me I could be doing I could be crocheting <laughs> in the comforts of home but I choose to be here and find my own way find my own way uh, I can somewhat relate to that because um, it's hard for us as humans to ask for help. It's hard for us as humans to put burdens on others. And I, I get it. Yeah. It's you okay? Yeah. 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 Um. I've been working with Roots. It's a community assistance program out here. It's a health center, but they have multiple services. Um, I have uh, bipolar disorder. And I also have multiple medical uh, issues um, going on. The worst is fibromyalgia. Uh, there are days where I am literally unable to walk. And it's like my whole body just hurts. It's like a shutdown. And I have arthritis. I have rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis. And it just seems the list goes on. Um, there are no preference points for housing other than county agencies who you can't depend on. Uh, I have one application when my name just dropped off the list. No one could find me in any database. And now, okay, I've decided no more county agencies. You know, and as I start this, no more this, no more that. So what other option do I have? Do I find me an RV and just become an RV person or what? You mind me asking how old are you? I'm 58. So you're looking at retirement. With nothing. In an RV. With nothing. Um, Tell me about homelessness. You were talking earlier about how uh, it makes you feel like somebody on Little House on the Prairie. It does. I mean, there's nothing. When I get up in the morning, I have a five gallon Alhambra bottle that I have to go to get water and I laughed one morning and I said I felt like Laura Ingalls Laura's going to get the water <laughs> you know and it, it, that's basically what it is, it's living on the prairie you have to go get some water you gotta figure out a way to, if you don't have uh, propane to cook you gotta figure out how you're gonna get some heat to cook or warm up something or 
whatever. It's, you know, it's, I can remember how saying also that we forget what the comforts of home were. And for those of us who have lost their housing being negligent and now choose not to want to move on is different when you didn't choose to be this way, be in this situation, nor did you choose to be in a situation this long. Um, I figured uh, 90 days, you know, I would have been back in housing, not knowing the struggle. I had not, well, I was born and raised here in Oakland. I left Oakland in 1989, late 88. I never came back until 2015. It was the first time I had been through the Caldecott Tunnel in all those years. And feeling like, well, so when you when you when you drive through Oakland and you see this and you see that and you go, oh my God, oh really? I didn't see all of this in Concord, Walnut Creek, Pleasant Hill, Brentwood, and at that point I was not a part of it. But now that I'm a part of this community, I'm so glad I never said never me. I said, wow, thank God, it could be me. And here I am, sucked up in it. But I don't regret anything that has happened. I don't regret anything that I've gone through because it, I've learned so much out here about people about people, places, and things. People, places, and things are so, hmm, what would be the right word? Uh, it's, wow, I, I can't even find the right word to say, but to add to that, it's relapse. I have been clean 13 years. And when I said, fuck it, it was the worst mistake I have ever made in my life. Now I struggle from minute to minute to regain my sobriety. I've been on Suboxone since February, uh, but I continue to smoke coke. And in that regard, when in Rome do as the Romans do, which is the wrong mentality for this situation because I want out. It's been a stumbling block in many situations and be it that I have an AA in addiction studies, I know better. I know better. Well, you handled it well. I didn't know you were using it. Wow, thank you. Um, I get caught up and I become extremely irresponsible. Uh, and when that kicks in, I get the I don't give a fuck attitude. And then I beat myself up because I knew better. I know what's in my toolbox, but I can't find my toolbox by choice by choice. Well, people don't understand. 
is how addiction takes over. It takes over your willpower. I mean, once you go cross that line, and they won't understand it, but I know you do, mm -hmm. it's really hard to get back over the other side because the addiction just takes over. Yes, yes. And I was talking with my therapist, and she said uh, it appears that um, I have not lost focus. I don't have tunnel vision. She says, but I can't reach out. Because in one hand I have drugs, in the other hand I have paraphernalia. Mm -hmm. And I've got to drop one or the other. And by doing that, whichever side, whichever one I drop, take the empty hand and remove what's in the other hand and toss it. I have a ritual when I'm done with something. I go over to the estuary and I find a rock that will represent whatever that is. And I throw the rock. I am ready to throw my rock because I emptied one hand. Um, it's powerful. It is powerful. It is powerful. And to add to that, I'm like, I've gotten to condition myself to get back my thinking faculties. Everything's a cloud. And remembering how I got clean the first time is what I need to do again. I was living in North Richmond and the day before I left there had been a shooting that morning waiting on this train to go by extra long <laughs> but that morning there was a drive-by and it left 11 people laying in the streets and on the sidewalks dead the next morning I woke up, I went in my kitchen, and I got a box of garbage bags. And I went to my kids and I gave each of them two bags. You better put what you can in these bags and get it in the car because I'm out of here. One of my kids, he said, what you been smoking this morning? Nothing, but I'm ready to go. It's dangerous. Yes. My kids and I left with garbage bags full of clothes uh, uh, I think it was a PS something some kind of TV game system right, right. and a television not knowing where we were going I had a three-fourths of a tank of gas and sixty dollars and didn't think to get no food and I got on the freeway and I headed north and when I got to Vacaville we stopped at a gas station. There's a mobile gas station right by the outlet stores. And my phone rung. And someone's like, where are you doing? Where are you? And I said, I'm in Vacaville. And she said, what are you doing in Vacaville? I live in Vacaville. And da, 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 da. And when she came to the gas station and my kids, and we followed her back to her house. And knowing that I was gonna be sick as hell the next morning, she and I began to pray. And I remember falling asleep. I remember looking at the clock. It was like 4.18. And I said, oh, well, let me lay down. And anyway, I woke up. It was 10 o'clock the next morning. Knew I was going to be sick. Never got sick. I never looked back on that day. Two weeks later, I had a job in my own place. My kids and I moved in and things were good. I even bought another car. I lived up there in Vacaville for three years and then I decided to come back this way. Well, we ended up in Concord. I found a place in Concord. 
and everything was good. I don't know where I, I don't know what drove me to this day to come through that tunnel because I know as well as I know my name that Oakland is my danger zone. And two weeks later, I called home. And my kids were like, where are you? They hadn't seen or heard from me in two weeks. They were calling my phone, but I wouldn't answer it. And now, the story's in the sky. Here I am. And now it's time to do the same thing I did before. Throw something in a garbage bag. Well, I got some suitcases now. <laughs> and do what I know how to do. It's time to get back on track. It's time to get my life back. I need to go back to school. I have a degree to receive. It's waiting. I know this. But I can't get it sitting here. I can't do anything about it. Sitting here. Other than complete my FAFSA online. But I can't do anything sitting here. When I leave to walk up 77th Avenue, there's 23 tents, I believe, or, you know, if some people have yeah. tents, we have a camp or whatever it is. We're, you're in a sanctioned tent community. Right. We were going to talk but, about that, but you was talking about your story, which just, oh my gosh, you, I, I, you, you, I followed along. Amazing story. I didn't mean to interrupt. That's you're, okay. you're walking down 77. Mm hmm And I have 23 stumbling blocks. Wow. There's 23 stumbling blocks on 77th Avenue. And I've got to find my way past them. I've got to. If I don't, I could be the next victim here. With my health issues, anything is possible. But living here, um, let's get back to what you said, sank, being in a sank, sanctioned Yeah, you're in a, a sanctioned tent city. Mm -hmm. We, um, this is a very close-knit community. Um, there are days when I, sometimes I feel like I'm the mom around here or something. You know, yeah, it's like, Miss Connie, you got something to eat? Miss Connie, you got a cigarette? Miss Connie, how do you do this? Can I use your phone? Da, da, da. And the list goes on. And I don't know how to say no. <laughs> um, we've had many opportunities. Uh, well, not, uh, I won't say it like that. We've had a lot of people come down here with uh, the intent of helping us to get housing. We end up on a list like everyone else. Um, the city of Oakland assigned a uh, coordinator, I think is his title. Uh, and he shows up when you least expect it. The last time I had said, I don't even care no more. I didn't even know he was on the block. But he heard it. He heard me say it. And knowing my name, he said, Miss Connie, no, no, you can't feel that way. Come over here and fill out this application. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm grateful for that. Grateful for a lot of things. Um, but being in a sanctioned community, the garbage is picked up regularly. Um, we have porta potties. We have a shower. And we have a lot of people that come out here and feed us, that care about us. Um, some of the community, some of the surrounding camps, they're filthy. I mean, we complain about the rats, but they don't jump in bed with us. 
you know. Um, I don't know how all of this is gonna spiral out or spiral in, however the word goes. But you know that I know at least, I can't speak for anyone. I know that I'm safe. I know that I won't go hungry. I know I won't be abused anymore. And I know that there's someone here that cares. Every day that I wake up here, I have things that I know I have to do. I have things that I'm supposed to do. And there are things I'm just not going to do. Um, this morning, no, oh, I think it must have been about a little after 7. I heard all this crashing, glass breaking, and all kind of havoc. My shelf had fallen. <laughs> oh, there are cans and bottles and broken glass and oh God, the list goes on. This is the biggest mess. I picked everything up, replaced it, put it back where it goes, got the glass up and the cabinet fell again. <laughs> so one of the guys here, he said, well, just get everything out the way. I'll come and get your cabinet tomorrow and rebuild it for you. <laughs> well, the, 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 the black tent behind you mm -hmm. is your home. Yes. And it's not like a real home. You don't have solid walls. No. So your cabinet and shelf, it's not like... Yeah, yeah, like at home. Yeah. But we, uh, just like what the gentleman said, you know, he'll come and rebuild my cabinet for me. We have so many uh, skills here. I, I, I can't believe sometimes you were a what? You're, we have an RN on, on, on deck, you know, and uh, not here, but just in the streets. I've had pneumonia twice, and this lady, I was in my van, you know, it was before my van went away, and she came to the van one morning, she said, cough. I'm like, what? And she's so blunt with everything, cough. And I coughed, and she presented this cup. She just spit in it. I spit in a cup. And she pulled out her stethoscope, and she checked my pulse, and she asked me had I been having a fever and all of this stuff. And I said, yeah. She said, take your ass to the ER because you have pneumonia. And she walked away. <laughs> a couple of days later, Oh, my chest was hurting so bad. I, oh, I couldn't breathe. I didn't want a cigarette. I didn't want no drugs. I didn't want a cigar, nothing. So I went to the ER up that was there, ended up there 14 days with pneumonia. We've had a few other people here sick, and she is chill. She takes care of them the best she can. Um, we to live with Bart. <laughs> it's yeah, not yeah, going yeah, away. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. And we, I can sit and talk to you forever. <laughs> mm -hmm. But at some point, I gotta go. All righty. Okay. Okay. So I know your phone ask number. You, <laughs> if you had three wishes, what would they be? A home, my children back with me, and my sobriety. All great wishes. Thank you very much for talking. You're welcome.